Hey there, I hope you're well and having a great week and more so that you're enjoying the series that I've been doing on true Christian character that is based on the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. We began a couple weeks ago going through the first three Beatitudes, which really look at the state of the heart and mind before God. What is this person before God? And then last week, we talked about how that overall state leads them to hunger and thirst for God. So if you're new to this series, be sure to check out those episodes. I'm sure you'll be blessed by them and then come on back over to this one. So today, we're gonna be looking at how righteousness through God now becomes manifest in the life of a person that has true Christian character. We're gonna be talking about how it influences them before to behave with other people. So the first three were about how we relate with God. From here on out, we're looking about how that state enables us to relate with other people. We together? Great. Let's jump straight into it. Hey there, my name is Joyce Amondi Waihiga. Welcome to Sitam Church Online. So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, mercy really is a couple things and we're gonna go through them one by one the first thing is that mercy is compassion now john piper a great biblical scholar and teacher draws out four dimensions of mercy in relation to compassion he says it sees distress and then it responds internally to that distress with a heart of compassion there's pity towards that person in distress and then thirdly, it responds externally, now with an effort to help. It's an action that actually tries to relieve the distress that it has seen and has pitied internally. And fourthly, it acts even when the person is an enemy. Now we see each of these dimensions play out in the parable of the Good Samaritan that is told in Luke chapter 10. There's this guy on the side of the road who's been beaten up by thugs, he's bloody and he's looking a mess. And then a priest passes him, a Levite passes him. But then the Bible says that this Samaritan saw him and had compassion on him. So he actually did what John Piper was talking about. He saw him, but he also responds externally by treating him and tying up his wounds as best as he could. And then he even puts him on his own animal, takes him to an inn for him to get some rest and to recuperate, even pays that bill and gives the innkeeper even more money for the man's needs or to care for the man. And the thing is, this guy that was beaten up was probably a Jew. And Jews at that time were absolutely hated by Samaritans. Yet this particular Samaritan showed mercy on him. Unfortunately, most of us, including myself, we feel some pity when we pass some guy on the road. You know, you look at that mama and say, oh, that's so sad. But then that's it. That's as far as we go. And this beatitude is challenging us that that is not mercy. It's saying that mercy is not just about feeling compassionate. It's about something that is practically shown. It's something that is done. And so I think there's a way that we can look at this beatitude and think it's so easy, but honestly already this one just makes me think, wow, this is really hard to do. And maybe that's why the Bible actually began with that thing of our own emptiness and looking at our relationship before God first. Secondly, mercy is about forgiveness in the sense that it is not giving someone what they do deserve. Remember Joseph in the Bible, in the Old Testament, because of his brother's jealousy, I mean, these guys wanted to kill him. And so eventually they settled to selling him off to slavery. 
and then he was imprisoned and he had to endure all sorts of things. And then one day his brothers were actually standing before him in need of his help. Yet despite having the power in his hand to do whatever he would have wanted to do to them, he held back on that and he didn't hold their previous actions against them. He didn't give them what they deserved. That is another expression of mercy. A third expression of mercy is actually through grace, giving someone what they don't deserve. And what a profound example we have of this through the love of God, which offered up his only son to pay for our sin. We owed a debt that we could not pay, that we should suffer and die for. But because of God's mercy and grace, we are redeemed. So turning back to our scripture today, blessed are the merciful. Their reward is that they shall obtain mercy. Mercy is now begetting mercy. And let me just be clear that this is not about good works. Okay, this is not about earning mercy so that we can pack up points for judgment day. This is not what that's about. Otherwise, that would be a complete contradiction because mercy like salvation is not earned. What this is saying is that their reward is receiving more of God, who is himself the ultimate form of mercy. So the more we show mercy, the more we conform to God's word. The more we show mercy, the more we resemble God. And the more we show mercy, the more we possess the spirit of Christ. I don't know about you, maybe you've been listening to all of these um, episodes in this series on true Christian character. For me, this one in particular just seems so hard and so difficult to do. And maybe you're like me, maybe there's someone in your life that you've not forgiven and it's been years upon years upon years. Or you're the sort of person who just never turns a second look to someone who is in need. You just don't feel anything for that sort of person. Or you just haven't been able to extend grace to someone else that you yourself haven't even received God's grace. Perhaps we can pray together right now that God may help us to be merciful to embody this character of being a true Christian so that our faith speaks not just through our words, but through our actual actions. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you with thanksgiving today for your word. Thank you, O oh God, for you love us so dearly and for this expression of mercy that is so perfect through you. Help us, dear God, to be everything that we can be through your word. Thank you that mercy is about forgiveness. Thank you that mercy is about compassion. Thank you that it is about grace. Help us in the areas that we're struggling with, oh God, to be able to honor you with our words and our actions. And for those who are watching this and they do not know you, I pray that in this moment, oh God, you would warm their hearts to your grace and your mercy that before they can even give that out to others, they would experience its fullness in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If that's you and you've said that prayer, particularly the one to accept Jesus into your heart, we'd love to speak with you. Would you kindly reach out to us at Sitam Church Online on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There's also gonna be a number that you can call down below in the description. We'd love to hear from you and congratulations on the best decision you'd have made for yourself. And if you have any other questions on this series, perhaps on something else that I've shared, I'd love to hear from you as well at Sitam, at Joyce Omwandi. <laughs> at Joyce Omwandi, I'd love to catch up with you as well. And thank you to all of you who've already been sending in your questions and your concerns and your responses and your comments. I greatly appreciate them. So that's it from me, guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or a like, give us a comment. And next week, we're gonna be looking at true Christian character means being pure in heart. And that's drawn from Matthew chapter five, verse eight. Make sure you stay tuned. Tell your auntie, tell your sisters, tell your brothers, 
We'll see you next week. God bless.